Welcome to SharePoint Quick Questions and Answer video series. In this series or in this session, I will say rather, we are going to answer question number two. How does WSS actually work? In the previous session, we had said that WSS basically uh, is nothing but your core framework on which MOS stands, right? So any SharePoint product basically internally uses uh, WSS, right? Now, because uh, SharePoint is used to increase collaboration, and uh, it's basically an intranet or we can say it's basically an enter enterprise information portal it needs to host himself so in order to host himself it uses internet information services of microsoft right second it also uses one more product that is sql server we'll come to the sql server part but the iis part is clear because it needs to host uh, its uh, website so it uses iis we'll come to sql server why basically sql server is used in sharepoint but for the time being just remember the WSS uses these two great products of Microsoft, IIS and SQL Server. Okay. Now, basically, when we talk about a request which is sent to uh, sent uh, for an ASPX page uh, to IIS, you know what happens is basically the request is sent, and depending on the extension page, you know if it's an ASPX page, it gives it to the ASP.NET runtime, runtime passes it and passes it back to the client. But when we talk about SharePoint. It doesn't happen like that because you need to do some kind of pre-processing before it goes to the ASP.NET runtime. So what SharePoint does is basically it has it injects handlers and modules, and before the request goes to the ASP.NET runtime, it basically passes through the SharePoint runtime, does the pre-processing, and then goes to the ASP.NET runtime. So you can say that SharePoint has its own HTTP handlers and modules. Hey, show me practically. Okay. So let's see how this is basically how basically uh, these handlers are where these handlers lie and how do they work, right? So when you install SharePoint, you will get a couple of sites by default. Okay, one is your SharePoint Central Administration. At this moment, don't get confused. Just just remember that you get two sites. One is the SharePoint site and one is the SharePoint Central Administration. In this session, we are more talking in terms of the handlers. We want to see how the handlers are where they are located. So what I've done is basically the second site that is SharePoint, which runs on the 80 port. I have basically got, uh, I have went to the properties. I went to the home directory, taken up this path. And in that path, I have basically opened its web.config file. Now, if you see the web.config file, you will see that SharePoint has injected or has changed the web.config file. And the point to be noted here is that it has introduced, introduced its own HTTP handlers. That is SP HTTP handler. And in the modules, it has introduced SP request module. So any IIS site becomes a SharePoint site when the web.config file is changed in this way. Or we can say when the web.config file has all these HTTP handlers and HTTP modules. We'll come to come to the come to the point that how we actually convert a normal site into a SharePoint site. Because if you see the IIS, now this is your normal site, which has been now been stopped. And this is your SharePoint site. Okay. The SharePoint site basically injects these extra HTTP handlers which we discussed previously. So how is the IIS normal site different from a SharePoint site? Because it passes through the pre-processing logic of the SharePoint runtime. right? So whenever you make or whenever you create your own SharePoint website, you will always see these two uh, these two entities that is SP HTTP handler and SP request module for pre-processing. So this is how uh, WSS basically interacts or this is how WSS actually works uh, in context of IIS ASP.NET runtime. 